many medical traditions persist today worldwide in both indigenous groups and in popular culture. We have traditions coming from Ayurveda, Yunani, Jammu, Kampo, ancient Egyptian medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, shamanism, Native American traditions, African traditional medicine, and so on. Forms of traditional medicine can basically be found in every region of the world where humans have lived. To better understand these practices as they exist today, though, it is really helpful to look more closely at their origins. But where can we find evidence of how plants were used in medicine in ancient times? Luckily, there are a number of early written records that survive today. Some of the earliest written records of medicinal plant use, or Materia Medica, that are currently preserved date back to the times of ancient Egypt, around 3,500 years ago. Whether they were transcribed on papyri, on scrolls, or later bound in books, all of these sources provide unique insight into the types of materials people had access to in different parts of the world at that time. And how they were able to transform those raw ingredients is really interesting, whether it was plant, mineral, or animal in nature. They transformed these ingredients into medicines used for the treatment of myriad ailments, as well as for the maintenance of health. Let's begin with some examples. The Ebers Papyrus, which was named for George Ebers, who purchased the scroll in Thebes, Egypt in 1874, is one of the oldest and most important of the preserved medical documents discovered to date. The scroll, which has been dated to approximately 1550 BCE, or before Common Era, is 20 meters long and contains around 700 formulas and remedies using plant ingredients for various ailments. Here you can see an example of a recipe for a plant-based asthma remedy that was written in hieroglyphs. Another early written record of ancient medical traditions is the Shen Nong Ben Kao Jing, or the Drug Treaties of the Divine Countrymen, which was created in China around 200 BCE. This treatise contains an extensive list of 365 drugs, mostly of plant origin. Importantly, the text included detailed information about specific factors related to the plant ingredients themselves geographic origin, the collection time, the therapeutic time, therapeutic properties, preparation, and dosing. Modern scientific research has shown that these factors actually have a significant impact on plant chemistry and pharmacological activity. Although the original text no longer exists, here you can see an image of a late, later version of the text. One of the most well-known compilations of early medical texts was that of the Hippocratic Corpus, a collection of 60 texts from around 400 BCE that emerged from the Hippocratic School of Thought, led by the teachings of Hippocrates of Kos. Hippocrates is best known as the father of Western medicine and is credited with writing an oath known by most as the Hippocratic Oath, which is still repeated by students at the completion of their medical training, though in a more modernized form today. The Hippocratics also made crucial links between diet and health, and dietary restrictions were especially important. Although the common phrase of let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food, is often attributed to Hippocrates, it cannot be found directly in any of the Hippocratic collection of texts. However, the statement aptly applies to the describing the underlying theme of the Materia Medica cited in these teachings, many of which include plants that are consumed both as food and medicine. These texts identified 44 plants as useful in medicinal applications and described 22 of them, including things that may be familiar to you today, things like garlic, celery, leek, flax, beet, cabbage, oregano, elder, sage, barley, rue, fig, fennel, wheat, lentil, pennyroyal, tiger nut, blackberries, millet, sesame, onion, and coriander, all as useful dietary treatments. 
You can spot quite a few of these medicinal food species in this 16th century Dutch painting of a market scene, which of course came many, many years after Hippocrates. Around the same period that the Hippocratics were authoring the Corpus, one of the most important foundational treaties on Ayurvedic medicine was being recorded in Sanskrit in the work known as Charaka Samhita, or the Compendium of Charaka. It is one of two major Hindu texts to have survived on the topic of medicine, the other being the Sushruta Samhita, which was dedicated to Ayurvedic medicine and surgery. The Charaka Samhita includes 120 chapters written in beautiful poetic style, which describe the ancient Ayurvedic theories on human physiology and therapeutics, including sections on the importance of diet and hygiene on health. The pharmaceutical content in the text includes descriptions of how to identify, classify, and prepare medicines from various plants and specific plant parts, as well as from animal and mineral products. The use of animals and their byproducts in medicine is known as zootherapy, and this practice continues today in many forms of traditional medicine. The proper use of drugs, whether of plant, animal, or mineral origin, was also emphasized in these early writings, as evidenced by this translated excerpt from the Charaka Samhita. And I'll read it for you. Even if the most dangerous poison is used in a proper way, will become a medicine. Similarly, the drugs, if used in an improper manner, will turn out to be poison. So if a person who wants health and life should avoid receiving medicines from such physician who is ignorant about the proper uses of drugs. While many more medical treaties existed in written form in the past, they were most likely lost due to decay or damage over the passage of time. Fortunately, though, many of the early classical Greek, Latin, and Arabic records, upon which much of current allopathic or Western medicine is based, persist today, as many were copied or integrated into newer medical texts over time. An excellent example of this process is the work of the physician scholar Dioscorides from Anarzarbos from the first century in the Common Era. His greatest work was a five-volume book, De Materia Medica, or On Medical Material, which served as a precursor for all subsequent pharmacopoeias. Indeed, later premier medical texts, such as Avicenna's Canon of Medicine, were built on the groundwork established by his predecessors, Hippocrates and the Hippocratic School, as well as Dioscorides and Galen. For this reason, Dioscorides is widely considered to be the father of the field of pharmacology, or the science of drugs, including their origin, composition, therapeutic use, and toxicology. Dioscorides documented medicinal uses of approximately 700 plant species, as well as remedies based on ingredients from animal byproducts, zootherapy, and minerals. In total, he described approximately 1,000 medical formulae. In addition to detailed descriptions on Materia Medica, this work is particularly rich in color illustrations of plant ingredients. The original text was written in his native language of Greek, but there are a number of copies created centuries later which were translated into several languages including Latin, Arabic, and Spanish. Not long after De Materia Medica was compiled, the Roman naturalist Pliny, known as the Elder, completed the comprehensive encyclopedic work Naturalis Historia, or Natural History, in 79 Common Era. Written in Latin, these 37 books covered topics ranging from astronomy and mathematics to botany and anthropology, among others. Most relevant to medical botany are volumes on the topics of botany, medicine, and pharmacology. Nearly 1,000 years after it was first compiled, Dioscorides' seminal work and later iterations of that volume continued to serve as a leading source of pharmaceutical knowledge. Medicinali Anglicum, also known as Bald's Leech Book, is an old English medical text that built on this knowledge. Interestingly, an eye salve remedy described in this text, which includes a mixture of garlic, wine, and bile from a cow's stomach to be prepared in a copper pot, 
was recently recreated and revealed potent antibacterial activity against methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, commonly known as MRSA and often described as a superbug. One of the most influential texts following De Materia Medica, however, was the al kanun fi Atib, or the Canon of Medicine, completed by Persian polymath Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, in 1025 Common Era. The text served as the leading medical authority for centuries, and this was used as a standard textbook in European schools of medicine until the end of the 18th century. Composed of five books, the Encyclopedia of Medicine and Pharmacology was heavily influenced by the medical theory developed by Galen and the pharmaceutical work of Dioscorides. Over centuries, and indeed millennia, the constructs of medicine as we know it today were only made possible through the passage of knowledge from one generation to the next, through the authorship and distribution of written records that documented the preparations and applications of various healing botanical ingredients. So how does this process compare to the ways that we document and share medical knowledge today? Well, your follow-up task for this lesson is to visit two sources of medical knowledge, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which holds high-resolution scans of historic texts, including those dedicated to medicine and pharmacology. Pick a work of Materia Medica to examine. Next, compare this to medical literature published in the recent past by searching the National Library of Medicine. I think you'll find some interesting items to explore on both sites.